Hi and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're talking <laughs> all my wolves. Okay, yes, I was a little bit of a strange kid, I'll admit that. Um, I used to fantasize about being a werewolf. On down now. I used to have a sort of an obsession from wolves from a very, very young age. But of course, going back then, I didn't think that you could get up as close as, of course, I've got up to wolves since I've grown up. So I would make lists of all the potential dog breeds that look like wolves that I could own, uh, like Husky, Malamute, <laughs> German Shepherd. Those are my good boys, but they weren't very good today because somebody, somebody chewed up mom's underpants. Nordic Elk Hound. Is it a nice fall day outside? Samoid. And I decided that when I was going to grow up, I was going to own every single one of those dogs on the list. So as I got older and, well, you could say a little bit less weird, but perhaps still a tiny bit weird, um, I got into working with wildlife. I decided very on in my life that that is exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to work with animals. Um, as I got older, I decided one day that I was going to pay a visit to a place in England called the Anglian Wolf Society. And that was the very, very first time I ever came face to face with a wolf in real life and it was amazing it was this incredible Carpathian male and he had a great big scar down his face and he stood there and he he got up on his uh, massive log that he was standing on and he just leaned forward and he looked at me and I got this amazing photo and I remember thinking how regal he was how lion-like he was and he did have a brother in there with him and there was a female there but I was moved by that scarred wolf and that is exactly the very first moment when my love of wolves became incredibly apparent in my life. Now I, I paid several other visits to the Anglian Wolf Society and um, at one point they did have some cubs that were born to the male with the scar on his face and this beautiful timber wolf female that was ever so affectionate she used to allow everyone to give her tickles and hugs and in that litter there were a few puppies one called Torak and um, I was allowed to bottle feed this puppy and it was oh it was such an exciting part of my life and that's when you actually realize the strength of wolves because even the wolf puppies were biting off the plastic teeth to all the bottles so it's really really important that if you want to get up close with these animals and you want them to be handleable in tame situations in parks like the Anglian Wolf Society that you hand raise them from very very young so these puppies were being hand raised from about seven days old onwards and still had the strength to bite through those teeth. So after my experience with the Anglian Wolf Society I really simply could not stop thinking about these incredible animals. I knew that even though I wanted to work with all types of wildlife, I really, really wanted to concentrate on helping the wolves. Now I had lots of experience with other wolves after the Anglian Wolf Society and the first time I really got hands on is with this incredible, beautiful timber wolf female which you have probably seen in my most popular video which has had now over a million views. She was so amazing, touched my heart, changed my life. I'm forever grateful for that experience. It's made me realize that wolves are so much more than what people say they are in the folklore tales where they say they're gonna kill people, murder people. They're incredible, beautiful animals. After the Anglian Wolf Society, I did have a couple of years experience at a wolf park in Reading. And it was like a dream come true. I turned up there and guess who was there? Yes, Torak, the wolf that I bottle fed. 
and I was told by the people that ran it that Torak had got to an age, he was about three, and he was very, very aloof. He didn't really like people, especially men, and I probably wouldn't have any luck with him coming near me, and he tended to hide at the back of the enclosure and didn't really come forward. So I went in there, and um, he looked at me, smelt the air, and with a little bit of encouragement, he came over to me and he sat down next to me and he planted this big kiss on my face. I was over the moon and it really goes to show that walls, they don't forget. They don't forget anything and that's negative or positive experiences. It gets planted deeply in their brain somewhere. At the place in Reading they had some other incredibly beautiful walls but only a few that you could really really get hands on and two that they would bring the public in to meet would be two Mackenzie Valley walls called Mosey and Mai. And Mai was the alpha, Mosey was her younger sister. Uh, beautiful black colour with like silvery white tips to the fur. And as they mature, as they get older, they do end up going completely grey. So when you visit the walls seven years later, it's like they're completely different walls. Those walls were amazing. I mean, Mosey was very naughty. She used to sneak up behind a lot of the people and she used to test them. And you could tell that she, she had desires to be more than what she was. Mai was the alpha and I think Mosey was never completely satisfied with her position as being less than that. So of course at one point um, Mosey did overthrow Mai and um, she was actually deposed of being alpha and it was a really really sad situation. This is why I'm not happy with wolves in captivity when they're partially spayed. When I say partially spayed, a technique that has been used on a lot of captive wolves is to take out the womb but to leave the ovaries in and that means that they still get a heat, they still get a season. The, uh, the male wolves will go through that funny period in autumn time where they get quite aggressive, sometimes you can't go into the enclosures. They mate the females and of course what do you think happens? No puppies. And what do you think a wolf pack does in the wild if there are no puppies? They panic because they cannot keep their pack strong. So this is why Mosey deposed Mai. Mai was not producing puppies. Mosey stepped in and said, hang on a minute, this is not gonna be good for the pack. Therefore, I'm gonna take over and I'm gonna be the alpha and I'm gonna be the one to produce the cubs. This created a, a very bad fight and the females had to be separated. In nature, this would not have happened. So I think that if you're gonna have captive wolves, you really do have to completely spay or neuter them. Don't let them feeling confused about whether they should be breeding or not. It's really not kind and it's really not fair. So after my experiences with captive wolves, something didn't quite sit right with me. It didn't feel right. I think that sometimes I felt like wolves were being exploited for money. I know that money was being put into educational programs and also programs saving animals in um, other countries, but it, it still didn't sit well with me. At that point in time, I got more and more involved with Born Free Foundation. Of course, I'm very, very close now to Virginia McKenna and Will Travers of Born Free. And they opened my eyes a little bit about animals in captivity and how we should be really working very, very hard to keep animals in the wild and to help those animals that are in captivity return to the wild. So I turned my attention to helping more the wolves in the natural environment and um, I'm very very interested in now in the breeding programs that they have for the red wolf and the Mexican wolf. Those parks are really important because without those parks those animals would die out, those wolves would become extinct. So in certain circumstances, wolf parks are really, really, really important. In other circumstances, I think they do use them just for the enjoyment of humans and it's not nice. Some of the enclosures are too small. So one day I was around Virginia McKenna's house and she was giving me tea and biscuits, which was amazing, it was fantastic. Told me her whole history of how Born Free started. And then she literally off the cuff turned around to me and she said, Annika, have you ever been to Wolf Watch UK? And I said, I've heard of it, but I've never been. And she said, Annika, she goes, you've got to go. She says, it's the only wolf park in the whole of the UK that myself and Born Free support. She said, they're not there like a zoo just to put the animals on show. She said, they're there to rescue and save wolves. And she said, it's also the most natural and green and incredible surroundings that you've ever seen. It's like 
the wolves are back in the wild. So I decided to pop down to Wolf Watch UK and to tell you the truth, it's the best thing I've ever done. I, I really pondered about looking at wolves again in captivity, but these guys were set up to rescue and help the wolves in captivity that are attacked by their fellow mates. And of course, as you know from one of my videos showing a meager wolf being attacked by his pack, tensions run incredibly high when you take a pack, which of course in nature can naturally disperse. Um, younger members of the pack can, can disappear when they don't want to be part of the pack anymore. Um, this can't happen in enclosure so so fights kick off so wolf watch uk was set up when the founder was asked if he could take in some rescued wolves that had been attacked by their um their pack mates in certain zoos and since then he's become the foremost wolf rescue in the whole of the uk and they've got some amazing wolves down there now when i was at wolf watch uk i met their most amazing ambassador wolves. These are two very, very old wolves. They're 18 year old wolves, hand raised by the rescue. When, when a zoo came to them and said that they're, uh, they had had all these cubs and they didn't know what to do with them. And if somebody wasn't gonna take them, they were going to euthanize them. Um, so um, they took two of them and they said that they would hand raise them. That's why they're so tame because they've been hand raised since they were seven days old. They're now 18. It's an incredible age to actually be able to have wolves. It's just unheard of. In most captive situations, they'll get to about 14 or 15 and then they'll get sick, they'll have a stroke or they'll get cancer or something. To have wolves that are 18 is unbelievable. Another amazing wolf that Wolf Watch UK has is a beautiful, beautiful female called Anya. And I had the privilege of going over there to photograph her and we got some amazing shots of her. Very, very nervous, very, very timid. She was attacked by her pack in um, one of the wolf parks in the UK and uh, she had to be separated otherwise she was going to be killed. It's a really really sad situation again but of course she went to Wolf Watch UK and she's got an amazing home. It's, she's literally living in a forest. You couldn't get any more natural. She can hide away. People don't have to, to look at her. She doesn't have to see anyone if she doesn't want to. Um, there's other beautiful wolves there. They've got an incredible wolf called Callow. Again, she was attacked. Um, she, she was scarred all over her body. Um, it was from another wolf park. She was taken in by Wolf Watch UK. She's very timid because she comes from a background where they decided that they weren't gonna hand raise her. And I got, again, very, very close to her as shown in, in some of these photos. And I'm uh, really honored to have actually got up that close with her. She's a beautiful, beautiful wolf. Um, it just astounds me every single time I see one up that close. There was another wolf there called Poppy and I didn't manage to see her because she was so timid that all I could do was see her in the distance and the moment we walked towards her, bang, she was gone. Okay, another way that I really wanted to find out more about wolf behaviour <laughs> was to get a couple of wolf dogs. So I got Kumi here <laughs> and Mr Blue. Are you going to come up, boo-boo? Here's Mr. Blue. He tends to stay out of shot. He doesn't like jumping up on this stump. That's, that's her territory. I decided to, to get these two because of course you can't have a wolf in your house. Also, it's irresponsible to have a wild animal in your house. So Czechoslovakian wolf dogs were specially bred. They're 30% wolf, they're 70% German Shepherd. They're easy to handle because of the German Shepherd. They've been bred now for over two decades. They're a very, very stable, settled breed, of course not for the amateur and I will absolutely stress that absolutely not for the amateur but nevertheless they've allowed me to get up close with wolves in my own home and interact with them and to learn their behavior and they do exhibit very very strong wolf behavior there are so many traits that these two have that I have witnessed in, in proper full blood wolves, except you can train them, you can take them around with you everywhere. So this has been another very, very valuable way of me becoming very, very close to the wolves, the animals that I, I love more than every any other animal in the world. I know. <laughs> so finally, what do I want to do now? Well, now I really want to travel the world. There are various wolf parks that I'd like to go and visit. I'd like to go to Northern Canada. I'd love to get up close with those really, really tame wolves. The ones that have barely seen man, therefore they are so confident because they don't fear us. 
I'd like to get up close with the wolves that Gordon Buchanan got up close to on BBC. I'd like to get up close with the wolf pack in northern Norway um, that Steve Backshaw got close with. You know the one that did a crafty nip at him as shown in this video here. I know he doesn't like me showing this but I, I still have a little bit of a snigger when I see it. I'm sorry Steve, I really am, I'm sorry but it is quite funny and it could totally happen to me so I'm not saying it just happened to you, it could totally happen to me but I'd love to meet those wolves. I'd also love to travel to America this year and I'd like to meet the parks which are, are breeding the Mexican wolves and the red wolves because they're so incredibly valuable, those parks are amazing. I'd like to meet these guys, I'd like to meet some wolf rescue associations over the USA because I know a lot of people have wolf hybrids out there and wolves and a lot of them do end up in rescue so I'd like to meet some of the people that contribute to helping these incredible animals and also I'd like to go and visit the Blue Bay Shepherds because everyone keeps asking me on the forum below my videos do a video on Blue Bay Shepherd. I can't do Blue Bay Shepherd um, video in the UK because there aren't any. So the only way I can do it is to go over to use USA and meet the lady that actually started it all off. And I promise you, I will do that. And I will do a video on the Salus. I'm gonna be doing that very, very shortly. I'm gonna be going and meeting a lady that is very experienced in Salus and we're gonna be getting up close with those animals. So apart from that, is there anything else you'd like me to cover? Write it in the box below and I promise you I will do my best to try and cover it at some point this year. I really, really hope you enjoy my wolf videos and Animal Watch and please subscribe to my channel. It's a little bit harder now to find how to subscribe since the annotations have come off. But if you look in that little corner down there, there's a little tiny subscribe symbol. Click that now and I promise you I'll be bringing you some really fabulous animal films. And um, let's grow this channel here. Huge. Let's make it as good as Brave Wilderness. I challenge you, let's make this channel as exciting and as popular as Coyote Peterson's Brave Wilderness. That would be fantastic. And maybe one day, Coyote, if I ever meet you, we can go and find some wolves together. Bye for now.